Hi everyone, it's Dr. G. I'm here to talk to you today about socialization, nature versus nurture and agents of socialization. Let's get started. Let's start with a definition of socialization. In sociology, we define socialization as the lifelong social process of internalizing the norms and ideologies of society. Another way of looking at this is socialization is the process by which we become who we are. Now, we cannot have a conversation about becoming who we are without looking at what's called the nature versus nurture controversy. How much of who we are is based in our biology, our genes that we inherit from our biological parents versus how much of who we are is based in our socialization, nurture through our social environments? Well, I don't believe that that question will ever be answered. However, as a sociologist, I have to admit that I'm going to lean more in the direction of nurture. But I do want to say that I would be meeting, leading you astray if I did not mention the importance of nature and the influence that it has over who we are and what we become. Many cases and studies have, been sh have shown that appropriate nurturing is essential for human development. And when normal socialization does not occur, people are not able to develop to their full potential. There have been cases like Anna, who was found living in a storage room in Pennsylvania in the 1930s. Isabel, found living with her retarded mother in an attic in Ohio in the 1930s. There have also been cases done with Reese's monkeys, where Harry and Margaret ha Harlow conducted research in the 1960s that showed that when baby Reese's monkeys were separated from their biological parents, especially their mother, they were not able to fully become socialized. I believe the best way of approaching understanding who we are as human beings is to take a what's called multi-dimensional approach. And what does that mean? That means that we should never look toward just one academic discipline to explain who we are. So for example, you should never look to simply sociology and sociological theories to help you understand who you are, nor should you look at biology or psychology. I believe that the answer lies where these three converge together. When we look at all three of them, we will then have a much more rounded perspective of the socialization process. Now I'd like to turn our attention to talking about what's called agents of socialization. And when you think about the word agent, for example, a real estate agent, it's someone who helps us do something. So in the case of a real estate agent, that person is someone who helps us to buy or sell real property. So agents of socialization are simply people or groups that affect our self-concept, attitudes, or other orientations toward life. In other words, agents of socialization are people and groups that help us through the socialization process. We cannot go through the socialization process alone. We depend on other people. So let's take a look at some of these groups. And we're gonna start with the family. The family is, for most people, the most important agent of socialization. And it is certainly the first agent of socialization that we come in contact with. It will establish all kinds of parameters for who we are and who we will become. For example, what language we speak, where we will live, what socioeconomic group that we will belong to, our basic values and beliefs, and so on and so forth. 
you know um, that the class position of parents will affect how they raise their children. So for example, lower class or poor people tend to favor obedience and conformity within their children, whereas well-to-do or higher class parents tend to favor good judgment and creativity. This is not to say that all poor families will support obedience and conformity. This is also not to say that all well-to-do families support good judgment and creativities. It's just that when we look at the big picture, that's what poor versus rich families tend to do when it comes to socialization. Let's take a look at the school as an agent of socialization. Schools enlarges children's social world to include people with different backgrounds from their own. In many cases, this is the very first time that young children will come in contact with people that look different than them, talk different than them, and have different beliefs and values than them. Schools will expose students to different ideas and theories and hopefully will eventually encourage critical thinking. The peer group or friends as an agent of socialization. So friends are a social group whose members have interest, social position, and age in common. This generally will peak during adolescence. Peers will allow children to escape the direct supervision of adults. And for a lot of adolescents, peers will become more important than the family. As I mentioned earlier, socialization is a lifelong process. It does not end in adolescence. It continues throughout the entire lifespan and so therefore goes into the workplace. And it's interesting when you think about it, when you meet someone for the very first time, generally the very first thing that you will mention to that person is your name. And for many people, the second thing that will come up is what type of work they do. So for example, I may introduce myself as, hi, my name is Mark and I am a sociology professor. This goes to show how much work often becomes a part of our own lives. Mass media and social media as agents of socialization. We define the mass media as the means for transmitting information from a single source to a vast number of people. We define social media as the interactive computer mediated technologies that facilitate the creation or sharing of information, ideas, career interests, and other forms of expression via virtual communities and networks. So think about how little we might know about the world outside of our immediate environment if it weren't for mass and social media. We depend on the media to inform us about what's going on in the world around us. And the last agent that I'd like to speak about is religion. And for many people, they're personal religious beliefs influence their ideas about what is morally right and wrong and how they should conduct their daily lives. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have enjoyed this and I hope to see you back soon. Bye.